Join me, Gerhard Reinke, this week as Wanderlust goes to one of the most fascinating places on Earth, California. And we do some California dreams. <laughs> Of the San Andreas Fault, California is a land of extremes. From the lows of Death Valley to the highs of Mount Whitey. From hot and smoggy Los Angeles to cool and foggy San Francisco. From Hollywood actors to shadowy drifters to delightful hippie clowns. I was walking my fish. California has it all. Highlights of my journey would include meeting Steven Spielberg at its Malibu Beach House. Hanging out with real humble county hippies. And solving the mystery of Bigfoot. My journey would start in Los Angeles, the state capital. LA is more than just a glamour factory. It's a melting pot where over 86 languages are spoke, including Thai, Armenian, Japanese and French. And there's a whole lot to see. I made a beeline to Venice Beach, a seaside community that puts the fun in funky. In trendy LA, looking hip and fashionable is the only game in town. That's why I bought this fake mustache and clip on ponytail for a hot look. Like it is. You need to get rid of the mustache with the band-aid and get some dread like take a little wig over here back there, homie. Chris, the golly Miss Mommy. Let's not take this out, man. All right, that's enough. <laughs> When you think of Southern California, you think of the beach. And the beaches of LA have a special magic that is captured surprisingly well by this imitation Beach Boys song. Steven yeah, Spielberg! Off the beach. Now, off the beach. What, what, get off the beach! Get, get off the beach! Get off the beach! Ow. Hey, hey, you two, get the f Get out of the house! I'm getting the stuff! Private property, get out of here! Get your and get out of here! Disneyland is one of California's most beloved attractions. Also, the Disney Corporation's zealous copyright policy makes it illegal for us to show it. From Toontown to the new California adventure. This magic kingdom still embodies the homespun American values that Walt Disney himself championed. Perhaps this inscription on his statue sums it up best. Angelinos have a long-running love affair with the automobile. In LA, you are what you drive. So I decided to rent a classic convertible. The 1987 Dodge Shadow. And then I hit the open road. When the pressures of urban life get too much, Angelinos literally head for the hills. Hey man, gonna split the scene. Go up as the air is clean. Maybe on the mountain top, there's a view that never stop. Foot loose and fancy free, and there's a wide variety of trees in Shangri-La. And 
cut. Great, that was great. Before leaving LA, I decided to adopt a travel companion for the week. But first, I put this pooch through its paces and gave her a thorough inspection. I think I'll keep her. This lucky pooch will enjoy another full week of life before I return her to be euthanized. I named her Zeppel, which is German for Lionheart, and we headed north to Mammoth Mountain, a dormant volcano which boasts a ski area that is, well, Mammoth. And thanks to the mild temperatures, I was able to shed my restrictive ski suit. I've never been so alive! On this magic afternoon, I was in the zone, executing my turns with grace and authority. I was putting on a clinic out there, and everybody was totally stoked. That was incredible! What a rush! Oh, every nerve is tingling! Woo! Thanks God I didn't pipe out! What's that? Oh, oh my ankle! Oh, oh. When we return, I will head north for a San Francisco treat. My California adventure got more exotic when Zeppel and I went to Denmark. <laughs> well, not really. But Solvang is a replica of a quaint Danish village nestled in central California. Here you can find such Danish charms as wooden shoes, a wide variety of cheeses, cheeses, amusing knickknacks, guilty as charged, and wooden dolls. Also, part of me wants to go in to see the wooden dolls. Other half of me is saying, don't do it. That part of you is behind you, and it's best left in the past. Of course, not everything here is Danish. Do I look Danish? No. Is it? If I am, it's only by injection. Ah! After a delicious afternoon of wine tasting, it was time to hit the road and continue my California adventure. We headed north to Silicon Valley, which has not been the same since the dot-com crash. Let's go. I'm standing outside the former headquarters of internet giant Cisco Systems. As you can see, it's a shadow of its former self, as is all of Silicon Valley. San Francisco is one of the most beautiful cities on Earth. Unfortunately, it's also one of the most expensive. So I made my way to Chinatown, one of the last bargain hotspots in the city. There are many great deals to be had. I even found a guided tour of the city on audio cassette for under two bucks. <laughs> I would have left my heart in San Francisco, but I decided to bring it along for a lovely drive up Highway 1. This rugged coast makes the spirit soar with its awesome beauty. Zippel and I made our way to the charming hamlet of Mendocino, which doubled as Cabot Cove, Maine, in the hit American TV series Murders He Wrote. And what better way to see it than in the horse and buggy? <laughs> Zippel, this is a reminder for you to enjoy your last few days of freedom. I took Horace Greeley's advice and went west, young man, to the Mendocino Headlands, one of the most western points in... What the hell? Oh my god! Oh my god! Are you alright? He's having a seizure! Oh my god! Get his tongue! I can't reach it! Ow! Ow! He bit me! The giant redwoods of Northern California are famous for their awe-inspiring majesty. This is incredible! But there's also lots of fun things to see and do. Can you imagine a drive on log? Woo! What a rush! Or a walk through stump! Oh, did you see that? We walked through the stump! 
And I crossed another dream off my list when I took my trusty Dodge Shadow through this drive through tree. This majestic 2,000-year-old tree was named Moonshadow by eco-activist Emily Buttercup, who has been camped out in the top to protest it being cut down by loggers. Emily, how long have you been up there? I can't hear what you're saying. What? I can't hear you. you speak up? How long have you been up in the tree? Another attraction in Redwood Country is the legend of Bigfoot. Around here, Bigfoot is big business. But don't let the kitschy merchandise fool you. This beast is all too real. As evidenced by the 1968 Peterson film. But if the film doesn't sway you, then listen to this chilling eyewitness account by caretaker Dean Hardy. He was a hairy, big... Uh, you walk slow, big steps, uh, you're just mostly hairy and stinky, you know. As I journeyed on through Redwood Country, I kept a vigilant watch for Bigfoot, knowing that capturing this mysterious cold weather ape would bring me great respect from the scientific community. And let's not be naive, it would make me wealthy beyond my wildest dreams. When we return, I get to hang out in a real hippie drum circle. I took a break from my quest for Bigfoot and checked out Garberville. Nestled on the Eel River, this is a typical American village. Except that this village is crawling with hippies. They flock here for the harvest of California's biggest cash crop, marijuana. Would you say that most of the, the majority of the people here are cannabis users? Oh, most definitely so, yeah. Free marijuana gives, gets given to me a lot of times and then I give it to people. Uh, so. Hmm. Oh yeah, what do you call it, Rich Hippie? I don't know. If you shower. What? I like that. <laughs> are there any good places to eat around here? Um, yeah, they got free food right up there. Free food? <laughs> <laughs> yes. yeah, like that. Attention budget travelers! Community soup kitchens are a great way to stretch a buck. And as a traveler, you are technically homeless. They are also a great place to meet people, like this beguiling young woman named Willow, who had a compelling vision for world peace. Yeah, it's going to be a real big world movement for peace. There's going to be a lot of tribes from all over parts of the world. Once then she repaired my crotch with duct tape. Okay. After I returned the favor, she welcomed me into her colorful band of hippies, which included Roach, Pinhead, <laughs> Illinois, Jaguar, and Nugs. They invited me to come to a sacred place in the Redwoods, where we hugged a tree. And then I sat in a real hippie drum circle. My teeth itch. Oh my god, Willow can smell my fart. I, I, god, I, I could mumble. 
from Jesus Christ, I can't even speak in my interior monologue. Hey, what's hey, wrong, Garrett? Garrett? What's the matter, man? Cool, man. Are what's you okay? Wrong, it's cool. As groovy as it was to mellow out with my hippie friends, I had to get back to my Bigfoot research. So I pushed on to Willow Creek, aka Bigfoot Central. The centerpiece of the village is the prestigious Bigfoot collection, a museum which houses a compelling mountain of evidence proving the existence of this fascinating cold weather ape. There are state-of-the-art dioramas, tributes to the best minds in Bigfoot research, and even multimedia exhibits. Bigfoot's distinctive loping strides, known as the compliant gait, are impossible for a human to replicate. Museum curator Al Hodson demonstrates. The arms are apparently, it's a, it's a different gait. Uh, yeah, you can't, like a, a human couldn't no, imitate no. it. I, I couldn't imitate it. I know too many people that have seen them, mm -hmm. people who I trust. People like avid hiker tall. Tom Wilson. I mean, you could hear it probably for, I'm guessing, a three to five mile like, radius. Ah, woo, you know, like woo, an ape. Woo, yeah, like an like, ape with very woo, extremely powerful lungs. Woo! Woo-wee! Like that. No, like, because... So but the most convincing like, eyewitness like, account like, came from an earnest young man named Jason Simons. He was behind the bush on the, off the side of the road and he looked back at us like that and we only got the reflection from one side of his eye and it looked like a big old uh, frisbee, red. It looked like a red frisbee just this side of his eye. It's incredible. Should we stop and take pictures? I said, no, no. It'll flip over the car and eat us all, you know, or something like that. And that's, that's what I think. I think Bigfoot is our friend. I think he just wants to be left alone. Right. Then we return. I will camp out at Ground Zero for Bigfoots. As I set up camp that night, my mind swimmed with conflicting thoughts. On the one hand, the chances of encountering a Bigfoot were one in a million. Zeppel, come here. On the other hand, if I did see one, how much money could I expect to make off it? Ow! Finally, my sleeping bag beckoned, and I decided to sleep on it. Damn that. And it was a... Who's there? Wee. What the hell is that? Show yourself! Come 
What the hell are you? Yeah. Of my age. And thus my long, strange California trip came to an end. It was time to have Zeppel euthanized and climb on a plane. But call me an old softy. I just couldn't have that poor pooch put down. That's right, folks. I gave her to Nugs. Ruth, please remember to spay and neuter your pets. Ruth. You go, Zuna. Oh, <laughs> 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 